<clears throat> Welcome back. So, in this session, I would like to share something about patience and equanimity. But before that, there are some questions. So, I like to uh, do some Q and A. So, the question is: How to deal with the social distancing? With the uh, social distancing, when my body is craving for personal touch. So, in normally we have this um, three kind of like a set of mind: the feeling or emotional mind, and the concept or intellectual mind. And then the third is the unconscious, unconscious level, almost like habitual, the will. So there are three set of mind. So in Buddhism, what we talk about five skandhas. So first skanda is the form, which is matter, matter. And then last skanda, which is consciousness. So. The form is the object, and then the consciousness is the subject. So, in between these two, the object out there and the consciousness within, then there's a feeling um, concept, intellectual, and then the habitual mind. So the lot of things are so for example, when you look at the object, when you see something, when we see is this object which is matter, and then what we call I, the organ, organ itself, and then there's I consciousness. So the moment of you see something, they have to match these three things, the object, the organ, and the eye consciousness, what we call three match. Then what, what happened, next millisecond, some tiny millisecond, appear image of the object. You cannot see object directly. Normally what we see is the invisible, I mean the visible object which is not the object itself. So like scientists said, what we see is just light. When we see the object, the light can't touch to the, our, the eyes, so we can see the uh, look like object, but objects is or is no real object, isn't it? Same in Buddhism, object is impermanent, so change already passed. So then after that, what happened is there's some kind of like, sensation feeling comes the feeling which is you see beautiful then there's a pleasant feeling or uh, not beautiful then unpleasant neutral object neutral feeling so there's some some kind of suddenly this feeling the sensation comes sensation comes to the body then next, then the, the conceptual mind, label. Oh, this is good, or this is not good, or whatever. Then next, it will register in the subconscious level, or whatever event comes. So that is the third, uh, that is the, uh, the third aspect of mind, uh, which is the habitual. And become unconscious slowly, slowly. So, so therefore, this craving normally, the sensation, sometimes stay in the body, sometimes stays in the uh, subconscious level. So how to work with this uh, craving? For example, like if you have addict to the addicted to the alcohol, drink too much, then this craving comes, and actually, this feeling. Our mind, the conceptual mind, 
is really looking for this pleasant, the cre- the the pleasant feeling, which is sensation. When you drink alcohol, this pleasant sensation comes, and you are craving. You are looking. You are you are feeling, and your con the conscious mind, and then become slowly, slowly habit. So solidify and looking for that. But no matter what we project, it we project on the alcohol. We think we are addicted to the alcohol, but actually we are addicted to the sensation of that alcohol. So normally we don't see that. We just always our mind always project out, and we 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 not come into the body, into the sensation. So not e- easy to uh, free this um, addiction. So, so sometimes you know conceptually you know drinking too much alcohol no good. And after drinking alcohol, sometimes emotionally, sometimes you feel no good. Then you have a lot of you feel not good. Also, you know, and the consequences, a lot of consequences, also not so well. You know that, but then the habit, and the habit become a boost to the the sensation and the habit become together, the craving, and looking you can, looking for the alcohol you cannot control. So even though you know, oh, alcohol is no good, alcohol is no good, but then you will drink alcohol. No, no, tomorrow, tomorrow. I will only drink today. But I'm tomorrow, I will not drink alcohol. No alcohol, no alcohol, no alcohol. You know, you will get. <laughs> so therefore, <clears throat> how to work with this craving sensation? The one of the first step, very effective. This is a foundation practice and also fundamental practice, which is. To be aware of this craving sensation. So, if you are really craving for this touch, you just be with that craving. You don't need to block. Don't try to chase them. I mean, don't try to get get out of. Don't try to get rid of that. Don't try to create this craving sensation. Just. Rest awareness, rest on the craving sensation, just like your mind rests on your breath, or your mind rests on the sound. So we learned this in the past, right? Same thing now. Rest on the craving. Sometimes craving become a little bit stronger. Okay, be strong. But if you feel too much overwhelmed, then change. Listen to sound. Watch. Uh, watch your breath. Then back to again with the. And then craving become pieces. There's a lot of sensation in the body. There's an image of alcohol, whatever. There's a automatic voices. Oh, you should have the alcohol. Oh, otherwise you will. You are shaking body. Now your body is shaking you. Now a lot of I I may have fear. I cannot sleep. Oh, you know. There's a belief. So it become four pieces. The craving become four pieces. If you remove remove on one of them, there will be no craving. So if you remove the sensation. No craving. Remove the object, alcohol cannot. Remove the voice, cannot. Remove the belief, also not easy to find the craving. So all these four combination together, then become craving. So this is also good to work with addictions also. So when you say no, 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 same like no pizza, same thing. Sometimes that even worse for the addicted. <clears throat> Once the addiction, no, no, no alcohol, no alcohol, no alcohol doesn't work. No pizza, no pizza, no pizza, more pizza, right? And if you look for pizza, then it's proper. So just be with that, that、mm, kind of like restless,、uh, impatient. Actually, today I'm,、uh, I want to discuss about patience. So how to have patience? One of the thing is we have this impatient within us, moving and shaking, and mind becomes speedy.、Uh, so, how we can free this? We cannot free you. We get out or stop. Doesn't work. Yes, sir. Follow this. Doesn't work. So be with it. Be patient. This <laughs> is a key point. So it's a very good question. In this troublesome. Times, I have been feeling a sense of urgency that I must awaken my Buddha nature. 
quickly so that I can benefit others. This sometimes leaves me feeling frustrated and guilty. How should I deal with these negative emotions? So, Buddha is just here right now. <laughs> what we believe, you are Buddha. We all are Buddha. But what happened, you are not recognized, not discovered. So, awareness, I, uh, I introduce a lot about awareness, isn't it? Awareness like sky, always free, present, pure, genuine, thought, emotion, feeling, guilt here, stress, impatient, all these are cloud in the sky. And uh, um, emotions, panics, um, loss of steam, um, hatred, ignorance, all these are like sky. I mean the cloud in the sky. So what is awareness? Free. It is clarity. It is luminosity. And awareness is love. Awareness is compassion. Awareness is wisdom. So, I mentioned before, how to connect with your innate quality, like you just know that you're breathing. For example, just simple practice with the, with the breathing meditation, knowing breath as it is normally. We just knowing breath as it is, shallow breath, deep breath. Uh, peaceful breath, not peaceful breath, whatever breath is okay. You just just watch whatever. So that is a wisdom. Seeing things as it is is a wisdom. So knowing, knowing, knowing. That is awareness, knowing from the knowing aspects, awareness. Recognize that knowing, also wisdom. And knowing the breath as it is, also wisdom. At the same time, you are not blocking other thought. You are not blocking mistakes. You are not bl blocking guilt. You are not blocking panic. You are not blocking impatience. Welcome them. So that is real kind. That is the beginning of love. That is the really compassion. So by doing that, then slowly, slowly you will discover your innate quality within yourself. So of course we have step by step levels. Normally. I have this introduction meditation level so now we are mostly what I'm teaching is the introductory level but very important like foundation of the building then we have this uh, next is the joy of living joy of living courses that's I have book but I have courses so one two three level one is all about awareness level two is all about love and compassion level three is all about wisdom so then after that a very serious to practice we have path of liberation so that's level five so in my tradition we have to practice step by step so there's a lot of kind of like tricks <laughs> kind of surprise aha like when you watch a movie you you don't want to you know the ending story beginning of the movie isn't it so i cannot tell you all this what's inside i i'm teaching now is the foundation very important but uh, you have to practice step by step practice those. So then you have full this practice of discovering who you are, our uh, innate, the enlightened quality within ourselves. So don't worry about, I have to get soon, you know. When you really let go of achievements, then the enlightenment, is getting close. The real enlightenment is nothing to achieve. <laughs> it's just there. I do a lot of informal meditation during my training and working hours. Should I change it to formal meditation to achieve the learning? Yeah, normally we need to have formal and informal, but patient, you know, this is the patient topic, patient, equanimity, these are really important. So when you do meditation, the first important is 
you need to find some kind of rhythm, natural flow, natural rhythm. So of course you have to begin. You so here patient is is all about how to finding balance. So you have to start, but at the same time you have to be loose, let go. Don't be rigid. Don't be too tight. So like the formal meditation you have to do, but also have to see how much you can do. Maybe some people can do 10 minutes, some people cannot, only 5 minutes, some people 1 hour is easy. So you have to slowly, slowly increase. You need to build this habit. So habit, begin beginning to begin with this habit, what we call 21, 3 weeks to the 30 days to begin to have habit. And after that, more easy. After 3 months later, become 3 months later, become more solid. The habit become easy. So it will become, so 3, remember, feeling, a cognitive mind, and habitual mind. So habitual will fully register. The good habits are wonderful to, to have. We should have these good habits. So, so therefore, we need a patience. Cannot have result today. Maybe you meditate for one hour today, and tomorrow you cannot meditate. So you need to find find natural rhythm. So even that formal meditation, when you sit on the cushion, the first what you have to see is okay. What? my mind want to do maybe watch breath maybe listen to sound maybe a simple mental recitation or maybe awareness of the body or open awareness so there's four or five meditation techniques that i taught in the previous um the youtube uh open this uh, teaching so Try to do practice one of those. So then try that until you feel some bored. Then change. So changing is also important. Change, changing meditation technique that really helps you to be more fresh. And also, uh, meditation should be working with them more creative. So in this. Uh, today I walk my meditation with my major emotion like panic. The moment a panic comes, back to the breath, panic, back to the breath, panic, back to the breath, or craving, back to the breath. So these are the first meditation technique. Then slowly, slowly you can use that craving, you can use the panic, the sensation, as support for meditation. So, so few days focus about panic, few days focus about whatever problem, uh, craving or guilt or so something like creative. So you have to do this formal and informal kind of balance. So if you cannot do too much formal meditation, then even five minutes also good. Then you can do a lot of informal meditation also. So you have to have some formal and informal meditation, but how much you can see. You need to find your your balance. I have tried to carry out charitable, charitable, but events come up. Events come up to stop my charitable activities. It is karma related. So, what is the karma? Uh, we cannot really tell. So things which is, no matter how you try to change, even you pray to all the enlightened beings, it doesn't change, not easy to change. That might be karma. And things easy to make effort, easy to find solution. That is not the karma, it might be obstacle, just temporary obstacle. Just a little bit pray, oh, magic happens. Oh, enlightened being, that enlightened being is powerful. You know, the next time when you pray, it gets worse. <laughs> nothing, nothing really changed. Or oh, that enlightened being doesn't have power. So some people think like that. 
So what we believe, not everything what happened in this life is, is karma, but some is karma, some is temporary cause and conditions, Tem what we call past life karma and temporary obstacle. Okay, this is the, about it. So now I would like to discuss about the patience. So nowadays, everything is uncertainty. People don't know when the this quarantine, lockdown, open. When we will go back to our normal life, I can do my study, I can do my business, I can do uh, whatever those people are waiting and uncertainty. So it's very important to know about the patient. So what is the patient? What we call the, the essence of patient is mind of resilience. So the, your mind, there's such a, um, like a, kind of like very open, big, there's some kind of courage. So if you don't have courage, peace, mind become non-resilient, then it's become very sensitive. Even something wrong, we are very upset. Uh, something slightly problem, occur in our life we disappoint easily disappoint even though you don't want to disappoint even though you don't want to have panic even though you don't want to have angry even though you don't want to have worry but it worry so mind should be more um resilient so that is the patience so then how to have this patience so normally a uh, patient is comes with finding balance so i will i will give you one small example so here's a pen and the paper now i want to write something on the paper so there are three style the first style is Oops, sorry, very loose. I want to write something. Very difficult to write. Can you see? Anyway. So, oh gosh. I need to write this letter, you know, I have a deadline. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. Let's see today. Oh, what? Yeah, tomorrow I will do it. And tomorrow become next day, next day become next week, next week become next year maybe. So, this first style. And second style is, I have to write down deadline. Yes, to do list number one, number two, number three. <sighs> So become like this, you know. <laughs> so very difficult to write. And there's extra tension tight and the letter will not be perfect, you know. You want to make you know not mistake, perfect, nice mm, sentence, then it, it become opposite, you know. The sen the look the letter look also become not nice. You will forget and you will do more mistakes and then you will more upset and then in the end what happened give up so you will easy to give up so then the third style relax your hand gently gently grab the pen and you can write down something follow to the nature flow you don't have to do like so you don't have to do like that that that's too tight and too loose isn't it so nature flow supposed to be a and b so you can write right so so third style is fine we have the balance so you're not too loose, but you're not too tight. 
So how we can do that? Not too loose, not too tight, to find balance. So not too tight. How to be not too tight? We have to let go. We have to accept the reality. So therefore, in the patient, one of the very important things is to know, to accept the reality as it is. So what we call life is like wave of the ocean. I mentioned this before many times. Life is up and down, so we should accept up and down. But, but at the same time, life, essence of life, that's full of great things. Who we are, we have awareness, wisdom, capacity, skills, love, compassion, wisdom. So many great things within us, isn't it? So, accept this, to recognize this. But at the same time, whatever we do, they will be not always perfect. So, up and down, up and down, up and down. So therefore, let go. Life is like wave of the ocean, except up and down. But don't give up. Use your wisdom, knowledge, skills, whatever you can. Try your best, what we call. You have to try your best, but your mind, don't too tighten on the result. Enjoy the cause. With the whatever you could, whatever you can. Try your best. So then you will find a balance. Then you can easily follow the nature of rhythm. So when you go up, you can go up. When it's gone down, you can go down. You know how to dance the life. Life is like dancing, like dancing. Like life is like stock market. I mentioned this before. So accepting that is letting go. But not giving up, using your in it, call it try your best. So then it's become really powerful. So let's say if you want to go to top of this mountain, you know, let's say like this. Is there straight straight path? Is there straight line that you can go? Impossible. That is not exist. So what happened actually? You start here and you go up a little bit and it will come down. Don't give up. Learn from your mistake. Learn from obstacles. Learn from problems. Everybody does mistake. Everybody has some kind of problem. Life has problem. But the problem obstacle can become opportunity. Problem can become solution. Obstacle can become opportunity. So don't give up. You will go a little bit up and you will come down again. Uh, down, 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 down. So each time you learn, you will grow more. And then, in the end, you will reach the top. So it has become like, so I will paint today. Wrong, 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 like this. So that is the, our life. <laughs> but normally what happens, what we are expecting is, straight line, like this. So when we want when we don't have that straight line, we're upset. We make big deal out, out of that. We beat ourselves, blame to others, blame to environment, make messy. So then in the end, we might need to give up. Too tight, too loose. Too tight, too loose. So, so be patient is to find the nature rhythm. 
in in Tibet we have this uh, very famous um, story. So when I was young, my grandfather told me about this story, how to be patient, how to make right effort. So the story is about the turtle and the rabbit. So the rabbit and turtle, they want to race. Who can reach the top of the mountain first? And then when they start, the rabbit thought, oh, I can jump, you know, a few times. I will reach the top of the mountain. Mm, this turtle, you know, slowly, slowly, you know, how I can I pair with, how can I, you know, compare with the turtle? So then the rabbit jumps, very quickly jumps, almost reached up. And the rabbit was very tired and then slipped there. But the turtle, you know, slowly relax, you know, continue to not give up, but not not too tight. And then in the end, Turtle reached top of the mountain. And then Turtle was calling to Rabbit, you know. And Rabbit back up and Rabbit looked down. Oh yeah, where's Turtle? Turtle is calling me. I cannot see. And again Turtle called the rabbit. You know, where well, maybe nearby me, you know, look at the right and left. There's no turtle. Again, Turtle called the rabbit. Look it up. Rabbit is there. I mean, the turtle is up there. So therefore, continued. Don't give up. Learn from mistake. Grow from obstacles. And in the end, everything actually become kind of like add up to your uh, whatever your sense of you want to achieve. So it will become like that. So the The real important is the, to find this balance is the really important. So, for example, you know, if you're artist, you artist, you know, once you learn nicely, then when you paint something, so if your painting comes almost effortless, then art become very good. Same with the singing, you know. When the singing comes effortless, the voice, everything become very good. So effort. it feels like effortless, but actually not effortless. There is some effort. But that effort is follow to the natural rhythm. Not too tight. So so then that is the kind of like real patience, equanimity. So equanimity meaning not too tight, not too loose. Hate to the enemy. You know, too much attached to the some something, someone too close to you. Then it's become unbalanced. So you know what is people who you don't like, you know what is people who you like, but there's everybody you can learn from those both. And there's this both can help you to grow, to transform, to learn. Sometime, you know, when you when you want to do something, when you want to achieve something. So you will reach the dead end. So normally my father said when you're going something, you reach the dead end. Then what happened? Most people give up or bang the wall. You will, you know, it will damage your head, right? So actually, you may, you may not cross that way, but there's different ways, maybe, right? Maybe left, maybe up. Maybe beginning, maybe different ways, you know. Actually, you might cross that wall, but not that way. For for example, I went to retreat um four and a half years, and then when I come back here in the Tarakar Vesaling in Nepal Kathmandu, so our my the old monastery is here. So when I come back, the old monastery was uh, 
broken because of the earthquake damage. So the moment of I when I saw the monastery, wow. So big shocking experience. I have a lot of memory there, my father. I learned in this mon monastery with a lot of meditation from my father, my grandfather. And now it's cracks all over the place. Some wall is falling. You know, big shock. Wow. Then I suddenly remember, oh, yeah, impermanent. Try to think about impermanent. So impermanent it doesn't mean die and nothing. Impermanent is changing. So it's full of possibility. Full of different door. So I was thinking, oh, how can I make, how can I transform this something beneficial for the people? So I make different projects. So now we are projects processing, developing. So I think soon we'll benefit for, now we have this monastic college here and we plan to have international like uh, meditation teaching and learning so now what happened many kind of like institute they teach you buddhist philosophy and philosophy about meditation but they don't really teach you technique but some the med retreat place they will teach you technique but they don't teach you background so here the scholar aspect meditative aspect joined together and we will have also new very exciting curriculum uh, so it will soon will have nice things will happen around this monastery because of the earthquake <laughs> i'm not saying the the earthquake um of course a lot of damage a lot of take a lot of people's life but whatever who are here right now don't let that you know take our inspiration our courage our resilience so don't give up Continue to learn from them, continue to grow from them, continue to transform. So I think this is a really important to our life. So, so equanimity, patience is um, works together. So now what we do is um, um, we will ask, we will do first little bit uh, awareness of the body then we will ask a question so when we are facing a problem in our life do we have solution or not do we see the solution or not if we have solution if we see the solution we don't have to worry too much it will be okay but if you don't see solution, if you don't have solution, don't be too upset, don't be too uh, feeling bad, accept it. But don't give up, continue to look for another solution. So we will do this analytical, analytical meditation. So first, keep your um, meditation posture and close your eyes, fill your body, and relax muscles in your body from head to feet. Scan your body briefly, quickly from head to feet. And to be aware of any sensation in your body, pleasant sensation, unpleasant sensation, neutral sensation, or you, even you cannot find sensation, also okay. Just be there.
So when you're aware of your body and the sensation in your body, this is wisdom, this is awareness. So appreciate about this awareness and wisdom. And at the same time, allow to have thought, the other thought, emotion, mistake, panic, impatient, allow to have impatient. Allow to have equanimity or not in equanimity. Whatever things allowed, but don't try to forget your body as long as if you remember body and sensation you can allow anything so this is the balance this is the patience this is the will be the equanimity And this is also compassion, love, forgiveness. Even the destructive thought comes, let them come. You are kind. Even the worst emotion comes, you are allowed. This is a really great openness. Great resilience. So to recognize that resilience, recognize the appreciate, and recognize that sense of openness. But you still remember your body. You still remember your feelings in the body. And now you recognize that remember body is wisdom. It is awareness. Allowing thought is love, is compassion. And there is balance here also. Appreciate that you found the balance. You found the great resilience. Appreciate that, finding the resilience. Now, think about whatever problem in your life, obstacles, especially with the pandemic. Do I have solution now? Do I know the solution to overcome? If not, if there's no solution, if you cannot find solution, then worry not benefit. If you have solution, if you know solution, you don't have to worry, you don't have to be tight. You will be fine. So let go. But don't give up. Continue to learn, continue to grow. Okay, now please slowly open your eyes and rest your mind as it is. No need particular object. Okay, thank you very much and apply this in your life. So whatever your life, feeling of impatience, 
uh, feeling of too tight, too loose, cannot find balance, not finding equanimity. So put this practice and apply this in your life. Remember about the uh, painting or writing. Thank you. Thank you very much.